Hello everyone, Athelotos here. And yeah, it's time again to have some fun with 3d7 floating point units. Yeah, it's actually the second time we have a look on this topic. Last time we only had 4 of these chips, but as you can see here, my collection has now increased by a lot. Now in this video I'm gonna skip all the introduction and the theoretical talk about floating point units. So if you are familiar with the topic, you can just sit back and relax while watching this video. For everyone else, ok, it's highly recommended to first check my original video here. Now a lot of things have changed since then. Yeah, back then my maximum overclock was around uh, 49 MHz, but now I have reached uh, 55 MHz. So this time I'm gonna push all these chips even further. And also last time I did all my measurements on the 386DX, but uh, this time I'm gonna use uh, this 486DLC. I know for sure that all the floating point units perform better with this CPU. So with this change it's also interesting now to see if the ranking between the floating point units is the same. So let's now have a look at the chips. And from uh, IIT we have the this 3 It is the 3C87, the 4C87 DLC and again the 4C87 DLC in a different package. Yeah, all these look quite different. However, in the end, internally all are exactly the same. Or, okay, the performance was exactly the same on all the benchmarks that I run. So from these three, in the end, I will only keep one. Then we have this little chip here. And this is a new addition to my collection. It is from LC Technology, branded as Greenmouth. And the code here is uh, 4C87DX. Now, in case you are wondering about how I managed to place this on my motherboard, yeah, the answer is simple, I just used a PLC socket here, and then you can plug it on the socket like all the other floating point units. Then, okay, next are the Cyrix floating point units. And before we only had this one, the 83D87-40GP. And now we also have the 487DLC-33GP. And finally also got one of these way more expensive and rare, 83D87 GP-KN. Now these two first ones are actually exactly the same. So again I'm gonna keep only one. This goes away. And then okay, this rare KN version is actually a little bit faster. And today we are gonna measure it and see the difference. Then here we have the Intel ones. Yeah, of course all are just branded as 387DX. And last time we had the top one, and uh, now we also have this one, with this nice white logo. But again, these two performed exactly the same. So in the end, I'm gonna keep only one of these. So finally here we have the ULSI ones. And yeah, here things will get a bit complicated. The first one is the one I used in the previous video, and okay, in all my 386 overclocking tests. Yeah, it has this DX plus uh, DLC marking, and the model number is US83C87-C. Now there is this one that is exactly the same, but uh, the DAS-C here in the part number is missing. So it is just 83C87. And then there is this one that is marked in a different way, and says uh, MathCo DX. Now in my case, uh, those two performed exactly the same and uh, the dust c variant was just a little bit slower. Something of course that is quite unfortunate, as I just recently did some video that uh, had all my final 3D6 results, and now with this one, uh, yeah, okay, I have already beaten my records again. The difference though is not that significant. Now another interesting thing is that CPU Galaxy also tested some uh, floating point units, and he had a comparison between the DX DLC and the math code X. And in his case, the code X was significantly slower. And that is quite interesting. So yeah, it looks like that there are a few different versions of this uh, math code X chips. On the left is the CPU Galaxy one, and here is mine. And first of all, his chip was marked at 33 megahertz, and the marking was there in the bottom. In my case, okay, it's very faint but it's marked at 40, just here on the right. Also the word uh, systems is bigger in my case, and I don't know, feel free to point out any other differences. Okay, maybe a thing is also here in the part number, as uh, this ends at uh, A3D. So yeah, for today's video, as uh, those two performed exactly the same, I will only keep one of these. 
And then between these two, I'm gonna discuss a little bit now the differences. And yeah, I went in and uh, rerun every single benchmark I could find. And here the known C variant in Landmark scored 209.9. And uh, that is a very small increase of 0.3%. Speedsys was very interesting here, as it scored 15.01. This was before 14.86, so it is an increase of 1%. And also, yeah, it's quite interesting here, because that means that the CPU score is actually heavily affected by the floating point unit speed. Yeah, actually I wasn't aware of that. So then, okay, Whetstone benchmark had also a small boost. But yeah, in the end, the most interesting difference for me was here on Quake, where I got this result that actually beats my previous record. This was here before 265.4 seconds. And uh, that is again a difference of 0.4%. Uh, yeah, very small, but uh, it is an improvement. In frames per second, this is 3.66 versus uh, 3.65. Now, aside from these uh, four benchmarks and uh, these minor gains, yeah, everything else goes the same. So for today's video and the final comparison table, in the end I will keep only the fastest one, so the non-C uh, variant here. Okay, so this goes to the side, and uh, here we have the final six. And I will now go directly to the final results. So now here are the tables, and on top are the old results. And here are the results of this video. And yeah, the first six rows are our floating point units measured at 40 MHz. And the next six are with overclocking. And if you see the four chips that I also had on my previous video, all actually overclocked uh, way higher now. And of course a lot of time has passed uh, since then. And changes have been made to the hardware. I have done a few optimizations to the clock network of the motherboard. But of course the biggest difference here is that uh, this time I used uh, 5.4 volts, while uh, on the last one, okay, this goes at uh, the default 5 volts. So let's see in detail now. The Intel one, okay, overclocked at 49.15 MHz. Not bad at all, I mean, uh, the Intel chips are marked for a maximum operation at uh, 33 MHz. The IIT, the LC Tech and the ULSI did uh, 55 MHz without a problem. Yeah, this is the maximum that my system can clock. The normal Cyric CP, at 55 it could run nearly any benchmark, but on Quake it was always crashing. So in the end 54 was the maximum. And finally, okay, the CPKN, this was a big disappointment. I mean, at 48 I could run nearly everything, but the CPR for those was always crashing. So in the end I had to drop to 45.16 to get everything stable here. Now all this makes sense, as okay, to my understanding the KN variant is just an older revision of the GB, and okay, in the end cannot clock that high. So now the benchmarks I tested here are all the same as last time, so if you want to see details about this, you have to check my old video. The only thing I changed this time is that I eliminated the floating point tests from Checkit, and the reason is that uh, this was not scaling linearly with the CPU clock. In a system like that, the performance should always more or less scale with the clock. So in the end, okay, I had no option but to eliminate it. But either way, we have a very nice set of tests here. Some of these are very specific ones for floating point performance. So first of all, from 3D tests, we have the Chris 3D Bands and Quake. And then uh, from synthetic tests, we have Linpack, Whetstones, Fractint, running the dynamic test at uh, VGA. 640 by 480 resolution. Then finally CPR for DOS. This IEEE column, it is okay from CPR for DOS in how many categories the floating point unit was compatible with the IEEE standards. And then okay, here are the average weighted scores. One okay just for the two 3D benches here, one for the four synthetic benches, and one total score. So in the end I have sorted everything based on the total score. And the total score gets exactly one point from each one of these benchmarks. So let's have a look at the 40 MHz. The worst one was the IIT. Yeah, clock per clock IIT is for sure the slowest one. Not only that, it also scored the lowest in nearly every benchmark. With the exception of Fractin and CPR for DOS. 
Then with a significant difference of 9% is the Intel one, but uh, this also had some of the worst results in some benchmarks. Then we have the LC Tech uh, Green Math. This one on average performed exactly the same as the Intel one. However, if we see here the categories, it was okay slow at everything, but it never had the worst performance. Also here with IEEE compatibility, this scored the best out of all of this, with uh, six categories, correct. So overall, uh, okay, this LC Tech is definitely better than the Intel and the IIT. Then performance-wise, the next one is the ULSI. It is 8% faster than the LC Tech, and this is across the board in every benchmark. So next is the standard the Cyrix GP. This is 2% faster. However, a lot of the gains are here in Fractin and CPR for DOSH. If we see Quake, the ULSI is actually faster than the Cyrix, and the differences here in Chris 3D and Limpac are actually very small. And of course, finally, we have the Cyrix GPKN. This is without equation the fastest floating point unit here. It beats the normal Cyrix by 4.6% and also scored the best result in every category. Now, as this is an older revision, it is just a little bit less IEEE compatible than the normal Cyrix GP. But in the end, okay, this is probably not that important. Now, of course, with overclocking, the situation is totally different here, as the KN didn't clock that well. And of course, the Intel one could not do 55 megahertz. So here, the worst one is the Intel. But actually, the AIT is only 2.6% faster, and it has a lot of categories where it scored the worst. Especially Quake, I mean, this AIT is very slow at Quake. So then we have the GPKN, that is only 3.5% higher. Well, actually, to be fair, the problem here is that uh, when you drop your clock from 55 to 45, you are not only losing performance from the floating point units, but from the whole system, the CPU and all. So this is not a 100% fair comparison here. And especially here, okay, Chris 3D is also heavily affected by the lowered CPU performance. So then, uh, nearly 6% higher, we have the LC Tech. So, okay, in the end, if you also include overclocking, this chip is more or less average. And the two top spots are uh, with ULSI and Sarix, the normal GP version. And this is more or less the same conclusion we had last time with the 386DX. Now, just the difference is a little bit smaller as, okay, the Cyrix topped at 54 megahertz, still the top performer. However, okay, if we see here the categories, ULSI wins at most of these, and the most important thing, of course, is Quake, where ULSI is the clear winner. And in the end, this is the reason why I'm using the ULSI on all my 386 overclocking experiments. So that was all about the results. Time for some conclusions. So first of all, no matter what the case, I cannot really recommend you the IIT and the Intel ones, as these are the slowest. Then the green mouth one, it's definitely faster, and a well-rounded chip overall. However, as uh, this is rarer than some of the other options here, it is also a very hard chip to recommend. Unless, of course, you really care about IEEE compatibility, where, okay, maybe this one is your only option. And then we are left with these three chips. If you're not interested in overclocking, or you cannot overclock past 40 MHz, then no question, the Cyrix FastMath GPK inversion is the best one, and the difference is significant, even up to 5%. However, okay, keep in mind that this is a rare chip, and certainly more expensive than the other two options. So even at 40 MHz, the normal Cyrix and the ULSI are not bad. But either way, if we go with overclocking, the KN is definitely not an option. So finally we are here. Both are actually quite good options, and you can relatively easily find them. In average, these two are nearly identical. Okay, the Cyrix might be a little bit faster, but if we are talking about Quake, the ULSI is definitely better. Then, of course, regarding ULSI, you can also go to the minus C variant here. The differences are very small, and you might be able also to find some of these math code X ones. However, here you have to be very careful as uh, older models are way slower. And I think that with this video I have given you a very nice overview of what is the best floating point unit for a 386 machine. Okay, for sure I'm still missing one or two exotic models, but exactly these are so hard to get that, yeah, okay, are only for collection. 
Now in the future I'm gonna revisit this topic and what I really want to test here is the asynchronous function. You see actually all these chips have two clock inputs, one for the bus and one for the core. And uh, also have an additional pin that tells the floating point unit to work in a synchronous or synchronous mode. In synchronous mode both the bus and the core operate at the bus frequency. Well okay in a synchronous both clocks are used. Now my motherboard is hardwired for synchronous mode and it's not that easy to change this. I'm preparing a special PCB that will do this mode and will probably integrate an any clock device. Now a synchronous mode should have an overhead, but for sure this will be very interesting to see. If ULSI can clock way higher than 55 MHz internally, then okay, again I will be able to beat all my previous records. And then with some other floating point units like the GPK in here, I will be able to be way more fair, as the CPU could still be probably at 55 and then have only the floating point unit at 45. So this is very interesting, but uh, okay, you have to wait until my next video. So if you don't want to miss that, you have to do your part and uh, throw me some likes, some comments and of course subscribe. Then of course I will not disappoint you. So yeah, that was for today's video. I hope uh, you liked it. And uh, okay, see you again next time.